thing that I know is that God always responds to hunger. And he always feeds the hungry. He always comes to meet the hungry. Thank you, Lord. And we're hungry this morning, God. Lord, we've come to seek your face this morning. We've not come to check off our uh, religious duty list, God. We've come to meet with you this morning. Lord, you're all that we want. You're all that we need, God. We couldn't make it one day without you. Better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere, Lord. We love your name. We love your name. sanctuary. Can you lift your hands this morning? Can I tell you, if you're the only one here that's hungry this morning, he'll meet you. You may say, nobody else is pressing in. I feel like I'm the only one. If you're the only one hungry this morning, God will respond. That's just how good he is.
our children this morning. I declare freedom over chains and bondage this morning. I declare freedom from depression, fear, and anxiety this morning. For where your spirit is, there is liberty and there is freedom. We declare it, it is done. You've given us the authority to declare it done. We thank you for it this morning. But more than what you can do, we thank you for who you are this morning. We thank you that you're Jehovah Jireh, the provider. We thank you you're Jehovah Rapha, the healer. You thank, I thank you that you're Jehovah Shama, the Lord with us. You're Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. You're the healer, you're the deliverer, you're the way maker, you're the miracle worker, the promise keeper, and the light of the darkness this morning. And we thank you. Bless you. Blessed be your name. Mighty God. We love you, Lord. We thank you for it. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus, we declare it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Turn around and greet one another this morning. We're glad you're here. Good morning, everyone. Glad to have you here today. A um, few things I'll start out. I want to give you a good praise report this morning. And, uh, we still need to believe for things to keep getting better. Uh, but last part of this week, Miss Angela, her son Michael, uh, made a call to her, a desperate call that he knew he was just uh, in trouble, uh, that his he couldn't breathe right like he needed to. And um, they got him to the hospital, and they ended up having to put him on a ventilator, and they got him shipped to Little Rock, and he's been there now a little over a day or so, uh, but yesterday morning, um, about lunchtime, Miss Angela had been able to uh, speak to him. He had woken up and looked at her and could communicate some yes and no type stuff. I didn't like the vent tube in his, in his mouth, so she was like trying to explain to him what was going on, and uh, they felt that he was breathing on his own much better. And this morning she sent a note uh, that they have gotten him completely off the ventilator. So I want to thank the Lord for that. Um, so just a prayer request as well that uh, his name's Michael. And just uh, continue to lift him up in prayer this morning and, and throughout this week. Uh, also, Miss Annette um, has found out she's going to have to have a surgery this week. So that's kind of why she's been out. But... I uh, remember Miss Annette this week in prayer as well. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that Michael story, just a great testimony. Hope we just see a total fulfillment of that um, as Jesus touches and moves in his life. But uh, this morning as well, thank you for breakfast to our cooking crew. It was awesome. Uh, Tim may not be able to walk. Um, he, he got 
two huge plates. Uh, so, uh, and then Buddy told me that, I don't know, Benji had four. I don't, I don't know, but it was really good. Uh, so we had uh, plenty of food, and thank y'all for doing that. Um, just a great time whenever we get together and have fellowship and, and uh, join together. On the topic of fellowship this next week, I uh, need to be planning for the ladies. Y'all are going to get a special lunch uh, after Sunday service uh, next week. So it'll be May 7th. Uh, you're going to have a ladies' lunch, and the guys are going to be cooking. Um, buddy's already got people lined up. So uh, we're going to be cooking for y'all for lunch in honor of Mother's Day and being a lady. Um, we want to include everybody's, uh, all the ladies are welcome uh, to stay after church uh, next Sunday and uh, enjoy lunch. Uh, also, a few other things coming up this week. Uh, National Day of Prayer is Thursday. That's at 12 o'clock at the courthouse. Uh, maybe put that on your calendar. Uh, join with other churches, believers around the community uh, at the courthouse on Thursday. Uh, then we're coming up on Revival, uh, May the 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Uh, that's a Sunday, and on that Sunday, it'll be a Sunday morning and Sunday night, and then Monday night, Tuesday night. Uh, we'll come, coming up on that, just to encourage you, as I mentioned last week, uh, it's a three-day revival, so let's uh, try to pick three days between now and the 21st uh, that we can fast and pray, just seek God's face, pray for uh, Brother Stewart, the message he needs to bring. Uh, pray for God's presence to be here, and just pray that people will be receptive around town, that they would be willing to come and receive uh, from God, and that we can receive what we need to receive from God as well. So look forward to that uh, coming up uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, one last one here, Master's Hands is going to meet on Saturday morning. That's May 6th. Uh, this coming Saturday, meet here at the church at 8 a.m., and Jim Max got us another wheelchair ramp to go build. Uh, so that's this coming Saturday at 8 o'clock. Uh, guys, make note of that. Be here. Uh, younger guys, y'all can come. Uh, great time to learn how to use tools and be involved in work and listen to Jim Mack and Royce tell stories. Uh, so it's a fun time and uh, very enjoyable. Saturday, 8 a.m., meet here at the church. Uh, the ushers will go ahead and make their way. Uh, kids, uh, this morning you're going to go with George and uh, Sandra as they go and do children's church. So uh, when the adults come to bring their tithes and offerings, y'all are free. If you're from first to fifth grade, uh, that you can go with George and Sandra to uh, children's church. If you would, please stand this morning and we'll take tithes and offerings. Thank you for being faithful and giving. I would encourage you uh, to begin giving, honoring God with uh, the wealth that you have. If you've not, um, it's a blessing. God will bless you in just being faithful to Him, recognizing how He helps you in His life, in your life. Uh, so I just ask you to try and test Him on that. It, even ask you to do that in the Word, uh, that you can be blessed uh, by being faithful to Him in giving. And then that's in monetary stuff, but also just our time, our talent, being faithful just to give back to honor Him. So just want to encourage you to do that. So let us pray this morning, and then you're going to be free to come and bring uh, your tithes and offering. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for a chance to be here, Lord, in your presence. Lord, just draw us closer to you, Father. Touch our hearts, Lord. Help us to receive from you this morning, Lord. Uh, bless the words that comes forth, Lord. I pray for your help. Lord, give us your wisdom and your guidance today, Lord. Uh, bless the tithe and offering. Father, we thank you and we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please come. You may be seated when you come back from giving as well.
Well, thank you all for giving this morning. To our guests, thank you for being here. Uh, we do hope that you have a great experience today. I'm going to tell you, it's way different. Church folks, the day's going to be different. This is different. It's going to be disruptive. All right? To our guests, uh, I hope you find a card right now that's by your seat that you would fill out, and then maybe you'll drop it in a basket. I don't know if you're going to hang around after church and fill it out, but you could. There's going to be one on the tables to my right. Uh, you can fill out a card, connect with you, and just let us know that you were here. Uh, we'd like to get some information out to you. But, uh, yeah, it's different. Today's disruptive. Today is going to be disruptive faithfulness. And I want to try to control the slides. So, um, let's see, it did. So let's talk about disrupt or disruption. And generally, we think of this as a bad thing. Oh, you're disrupting what I've got going on. Not good. Let me tell you, disruption can be good can be good if it's used properly and delivered in the right way. But to disrupt is to interrupt the normal course, to prevent something, a system, a process, or an event from continuing as usual, or maybe as even expected. And then we can get to, it's even uh, in the business context, it's a company or a form, something that happens typically around maybe even technology that causes radical change in an existing industry. Disrupt or disruption. Thank you all for playing this morning. Let's give our band and singers a hand. They're doing so good. But to disrupt, to interrupt the normal course what's typical, what we would expect to be happening. I'll tell you about a guy, disruption, Ben Weiss. And I kind of got some of this from him, but this little bottle I'm holding, how much do you think this bottle's worth? $3? It says buy on it. Buy. I remember the commercial that came out, the little rock group saying buy, buy, buy. It was a little song in the day, a long time ago, for us older folks, young guys, y'all won't know it. Uh, but it really kind of stood out. Bye. I'm telling you, this thing right here is $1.7 billion. $1.7 billion. Ben Wise, guy, came up with, from his basement, the buy drink. And he, was, he worked in the software or soft drink kind of industry. And he had seen that soft drinks were sugary, had lots of calories. He was like, surely there can be something different. What can be done different? And it actually came from like a coffee type uh, background. But he said, what can I do? And he went to work. And he created this thing called buy. It was a healthy drink, kind of changed how things were going uh, in the soft drink industry. And he Developed it, started selling it, and then Snapple, Dr. Pepper, that group said, hey, we want this. And they bought him out for $1.7 billion to buy this. It was an idea. And this man, Ben here, he likes to call himself a disruptor, or he wants to look for things that will disrupt an industry. And he created a show here, a billion-dollar idea. Like, I, I had a billion dollar idea. He turned it into a reality. And he was looking for people that could take an idea and create it and make it something that is reality. And one of his products, I, I'll go through one of them here, uh, but it's called Instasteam. And think about the hotel industry. When you go to a hotel and you check into your room, kind of what are some things that you might see in that hotel room? Coffee pot, a microwave, hopefully a bed, right? <laughs> there you go. Some pillows, right? And then you get there in a, a drawer, and you pack out, pull out all your clothes, and you've been carrying them in your suitcase in the wrinkle. And then you go look in a closet, right? And you hope you find what? An iron. You hope you find an iron. But what a pain to travel. Get your clothes all wrinkled up. 
you have to find an iron. The ironing board barely works. I don't know. It's just all kinds of problems. The iron's going to not work. It's going to run water out of it, by the way. That's by experience, right? I tried doing all that. It's like, man, these were the clothes I was going to wear to that meeting. Now they're all messed up. Um, but one of the products that he was looking at is this thing called Instasteam. And he, uh, there was an individual that wanted to, essentially, he probably didn't think of it that way to start with, but to revolutionize the hotel industry. Could you imagine going to all the hotels and not having to use an iron? But you go in there, and there is a bag that you could create steam. And what do we know steam will do? It will take wrinkles totally out of your clothes. And this is a product that within a minute to three minutes, after you put it in and put it in like a clothes bag, that all of your clothes could come out wrinkle free, transform a whole industry. Could you imagine all the hotels needing to buy these bags? And as more people came to the hotels and used them, there's a continual opportunity to sell this product, Not much less at the house. Amy found one that's even better. It's called Wrinkle Release, right? I, I don't know. She there's, There was Cheaper by the Dozen uh, the movie. There's a part in it that uh, the kid wants to iron his blue jeans, and one of them says, uh, what do you call him? You, what do you, you doorknob. Make fun of him for wanting to iron his clothes. I'm, an iron, I'll clo- I'm a clothes ironer, right? Amy does not. She's like, grab the wrinkle release. Let's spray it down, wipe it down. Good to go, right? But at the hotel to show up and be able to use something called Instasteam, it was going to be an idea that was going to be tried, tried to bring to reality, to disrupt a whole industry, a whole practice of what we expect when we go to a hotel room. And I'll give you one, I threw another one, cell phones. About 1876, uh, we came up with just the telephone, 1876. Motorola, in 1973, came up with the concept of a cell phone. Came up with the concept of a cell phone. Now, that was the idea. Took them 10 years to get it to market. 1983-ish about is when the first cell phone came out on the market. It was $4,000 if you wanted one, $4,000. But it was a cool gadget, right? Started making it in movies, put it in movies, man. And people see people walking around without having to have uh, a line to to hold you down. Like, I don't know, my Hayden gets to see a rotary dial telephone, but most people, most kids don't even know what those things are, right? You got to have a telephone, you got to stand beside it, and then you can't go anywhere. What the heck, you know? No, you can get that phone, you go wherever you want to go. How would we make it now without a cell phone? But it was a concept that somebody had. Can we move around without having to be tied to one spot and be able to talk to someone? It disrupted a whole industry. Matter of fact, 1992, first text message was sent. Was sent. Merry Christmas. Came from a concept that a person was asked at a, it was actually at a Christmas dinner, that, hey, what if we could do this? They went back and they started developing it, and they sent the first message, and he sent it to his boss and said, Merry Christmas. And then where would we be today without text messaging? I think we text more now than we actually talk, right? That, that, now we call, consider texting talking. <laughs> right? Did you talk to him? Yeah, you did? Well, I sent them a text. I mean, we, I mean, just revolutionize how we did it. And some of y'all kids won't remember this. Y'all don't even know it. You used to pay for those things by the time you sent them. They used to cost you for every one you sent. Not this unlimited stuff, all right? I mean, just totally crazy. Y'all send texts all the time. Man, you're talking about a mom and dad that would have been mad at you if you had sent that many texts, um, you know, 10 years ago. Um, 2002, the smartphone. How do we handle ourselves now that we can have our calendar, uh, we can open and look at Excel and Word and do all kinds of work on our phone that we hold in front of us? And then 2007 was the iPhone. Just threw that one out for the heck of it. But um, I don't know, we're on what, 14 now that iPhone 1 came out? Way back then. All right. So... um, We're going to do something different. We're going to have disruptive church.
disrupted church this morning. So in your in front of you, you've got your card, and I uh, we're gonna we're gonna do something you never do in church. We're gonna disrupt things. Husband, wife, get ready. Uh, you're gonna find a partner. Kids, y'all can find a partner, two or three. And we're fixing to take about five minutes. And then about two weeks ago, I gave you all this faithfulness check card. I had a couple of times to kind of get used to it. But this morning, we're going to disrupt church. And we're going to sit and talk to each other about how well are we doing at being faithful. How well are you doing at being faithful? So, husband, wife, I would love for y'all to pair up. Okay? Me and Amy, we don't hardly ever get to talk like this either. Kids, if you're here by yourself, find another partner, maybe two. Get in groups of two or three. And we're going to spend some time, and I want you all to go through. Ask each other, did you pray daily this week? Did you daily read your word? So I'm going to help everybody feel good, all right? So for faithfulness, I'm going to give everybody one win, all right? Your one win is you were in church this morning. That's a win, all right? So uh, that's a win. And if you're not a believer or not a Christian, it's okay. You're not going to be the only one that didn't do all these things. I, I teach class at, co- at the college. I understand people don't do their homework, all right? People sure don't like telling each other that I didn't do it, all right? But I'm going to make you feel good about it this morning. But band's going to play a song for a few minutes, just as background. But I want you to find somebody, maybe two people, get in a group, and y'all talk through each one of these categories and share how faithful you've been this week. Find your partner.
So, Disruptive Church, just want to let y'all try something that's different. But we've got to look at our mentality, how we kind of change church. And the guys down here, they were just kind of mentioning it. But a lot of times we think of, we come Sunday morning and we're consumers. We're here to listen and, you know, we make our check mark and we're gone throughout the week. But it's, it's really where we're contributors. And as we contribute, a lot of that comes from our faithfulness. If we're building a foundation of faithfulness in our lives, okay, we can be contributors and givers into the kingdom of God. So disruptive church. And then we're going to talk about disruption and Jesus. So, you know, does it really matter? But you got to think of Jesus. Jesus disrupted the norm of the Jews. When he showed up, man, he made things so different. You know, at, in their time, okay, it was if you were born a certain way, you could be a Pharisee. And if you could adhere to the laws in a strict enough way, you could be a Sadducee. And then you would be looked up upon because you were this kind of person either your background or, or how you actually uh, tried to live according to the rules, okay, or the law that was given uh, through Moses. And Jesus kind of changed that. He came in and did, like, crazy different stuff, all right? So just a few you kind of think about. Uh, he would do things like break the Sabbath rules. He'd heal people. Wasn't supposed to do that on Sunday or on the Sabbath, wasn't necessarily Sunday, but uh, he'd break some of those rules. He would speak boldly, you know, and then he would perform these awesome signs and do things that's like, wait a minute, you're not part of our group. You're not, you're not a Pharisee, you're not a Sadducee. You, you can't be doing all these things. And that group got really mad, but Jesus disrupted their mentality. Here in John 5, 19 through 23, uh, or excuse me, 16, I'll probably read a few out of 16, but uh, 16 really to 23 says, So the Jewish leaders began uh, harassing Jesus for breaking the Sabbath rules, but Jesus replied, My father is always working. So the Jewish leaders tried all the harder to find a way to kill him, for he had not only broke the Sabbath, he called God his father thereby making himself equal with God. He disrupted everything that they knew about, what was the normal course of what was supposed to be happening. And he says, so Jesus explained, I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing. Whatever the father does, the son do also does. For the father loves the son and shows him everything he is doing. In fact, the Father will show him how to do even greater works than healing this man. Then you will truly be astonished. For the, just as the Father gives life to those he raises from the dead, so the Son gives life to anyone he wants. So Jesus spoke to them. What y'all are used to, it's changing a little bit. It's, it's changed. It's me. And why? Because he was needing to be faithful to God. The things that God had called him to do, he was actually doing those things, bringing what would have been an idea to reality. He made that happen and encouraged, you know, he was encouraging them to, to, to accept it, to believe it. Now, is it always easy? No. Jesus said, tell you the truth. The Son can do nothing by Himself. He does only what the Father, what He sees the Father doing. And whatever the Father does, the Son also does. And Jesus introduced that concept to the church. He changed, He disrupted what the actual Jewish norm had actually been during the day. And He was trying to do that to share the reality of what was coming, how the new covenant was going to be lived out. In Luke uh, 4, 16 through 20, which was an example I was going to use to show you 
kind of how things can be a little different kind of in the church is Jesus did this. He says when he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went in as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scriptures. The scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed to him and he unrolled the scroll and he found the place where this was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. He rolled up the scroll and handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And as we did this morning, just to disrupt church a little bit, sometimes we have to be active. We have to actively speak and carry out what we need to do. And being faithful, just being willing to talk about each other. And we call it accountable, if you will, but letting people know, hey, I've read my Bible. You know, I'm praying daily. I'm building a foundation which I can live on and have strength in Christ for. All right? So, uh, that was going to be my tie-in that we can follow Jesus' practices, disruptions, changes, things that, ideas that God gives us. We can put those in place, even though they may be different or not what is normal, okay? We can do those things through Christ. And he, Jesus set that example for us. But not only him, there's some others that we can look at got in the next group here my Susan I may have lost control of the we can go to the next one thank you here in Peter think about Peter and how he disrupted or changed what would happen Peter Acts 2 14 through 36 describes the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came landed and touched the people and they began to speak in tongues and all the other uh, people, Jewish people that were in town heard them speaking in their languages and then Peter stood up and he stepped forward and he told them, hey listen carefully, all you fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem make no mistake about this these people are not drunk as some of you are assuming 9 o'clock in the morning is much too early for that no, what you uh, C was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. And then um, Enoch, we'll go through a few others. That like, man, how they changed, what they did that disrupted what people were used to. You got Enoch. He was, he was so good and faithful. It was by faith. This is all out of Hebrews 11, by the way. It says it was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying disappeared because God took him for he was uh, for before he was taken up he was known as a person who pleased God he lived so close to God so unusually close to God that God took him that he was no more still alive um, as he as God came to get him and Noah Noah in verse 7 in Hebrews 11 it says it's by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God who warned him about the things uh, that had never happened before. So Noah is out in a time, never seen rain so much that, that would be coming. People just didn't understand what would happen and he began to speak to them and tell them about this flood that was coming and that he was building this boat to be prepared to repent to change from their normal course of actions to follow him and and being realizing that God was coming that there was a there was a change that needed to be made you got uh, the Israelites when they crossed the Red Sea you've got Joshua leading uh, to the defeat of Jericho what battle general had ever said hey we're just gonna walk around the outside of this building we're just gonna walk around it and then to see it actually fall and the, uh, the victory would be won. 
just so different, so uh, unusual, and it disrupted what everything had been planned to do or had been done before. Then you've got Gideon, and Gideon took a, a battle strategy that had never been done before. He had these, he had a, uh, God spoke to him, is like, look at these men that were with you, the ones that lap water. They're the ones you're going to be able to take. And it like made almost 30,000 of them be disqualified and 300 of them to be able to fight in the battle. So totally different strategy that God had given him on how he was actually going to live or win the battle. Then we've got last few things here, Sousa Street Revival. Interesting thing, that was in 1906. He was a, a young black preacher. He had been a student of a guy named Paul. And it's where they learned and uh, really developed that speaking in tongues was a power that a believer could have. And they really uh, bought into that. It changed how people looked at church and how the person that attended church, the believer, was supposed to act and how much power they had to act when the Holy Spirit baptizes them and that they can live in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then from that Azusa Street Revival came the Assemblies of God, 1914. People in the Hot Springs, it was actually in April. We're in April, about 100 years after that. But in 1914, they got together and said, hey, we, this new thing that's happening, we need to organize this and, and put a structure to it to try to help people keep the purity of it, to develop it and, and form a whole denomination does not only here in the United States, but goes across the world and encourages people to be inspired in missions and that the priesthood of the believer that, hey, you have a part, an active part in living out what God would want you to do, which really gets us to where I was hoping that we would be this morning. And I want to end with just our faithfulness uh, scriptures. I want to encourage you. In Matthew 25, 23, it says, The Master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so I will give you many more responsibilities. And let's celebrate together. But as we're faithful with what God gives us, small things, God can give us bigger things. And then as we carry and we operate in those, we're going to be able to hear that, God, that God says, well done, my good and faithful servant. And then Luke 16 here, it says, if you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in the large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibility. If you're untrustworthy with world about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And where we need to get in our lives, you can go to the next slide, see, is that we can have responsibilities. If we handle our responsibilities in God, even the small things, He'll give us bigger ones. But we have to be faithful in them. Because if we're not faithful in the little things that God gives us, if we're not faithful in those, we're not going to have a chance to be faithful in big things. And what we need here in Magnolia are big things. We need big things. We need, we've done church for so long. And we did church a little different this morning. Just to be able to talk in church, it's okay. That's what we're here for is to encourage each other. And then honestly, one day, if we're not being faithful, we're going to face God. And he's going to tell us to give an account. And if we haven't gotten used to being around our friends, our church members, and having to know, hey, there's some responsibility to being in Christ, and that I need to be faithful in that to Him, all right? If we can't do that now, we're going to have a really rude awakening whenever God stands before us and says, hey, what'd you do? How did you do it? Did you do what I asked you to do? Were you faithful in what I asked you to do? That time's a little late to realize, man, this is uncomfortable. No, I really didn't do that. Today, if you looked over your list, and I didn't do some of those things, I'm not saying that's just a checklist and that's going to make sure you get to heaven. No, that's faith in Christ, that you believe in Him that's going to get you to heaven. But to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, 
That means you've done. That means you've done something. You had to do it. You had to live it out. Okay? And you need to be able to live out and carry out your faith. But what we need is disruptive faith now. Everybody, we're used to the normal. We just do normal. I go through the week. I show up Sunday. Man, I'm a Christian. We're doing it. Yes and no. But I believe God can give us ideas. There can be God-given and God-blessed ideas that we can receive that may be so disruptive in the sense of it changes us from the normal that it will attract someone. My $1.7 billion drink is gone here. But if that's sitting there, just imagine how much if we come up with the God-given idea and we birth it from an idea to reality, how that could change the norm and disrupt and change. Not only be looking at a one point billion dollar idea, but all the lives that could be changed and influenced through us because of Christ. That's where Christ wants us to get. That we need to reach the people around us, the people of the Magnolia area for Him. And we can do that through faithfulness. And it may be an idea that's not normal or hey, can we really do that? I don't know. But if it's God-given and God-blessed, yeah, we can probably do that. But it's not all going to be in me. I'm not the only one that did it. I didn't come up with buy. Wasn't sitting around thinking about, hey, we need a new drink that's not sugary and full of calories. Let's make something different. How can we do that? Didn't sit around and think like that or think, hey, I was just happy I was on the phone. But what if I could walk around and not need to be tied to this one spot on the phone? You know, there are ideas that y'all may receive God can give you that we need to get from an idea to a reality. Jesus needed people to know the Father sent him. And what he saw the Father doing, he did it. And it changed the norm of what was happening in the Jewish tradition. Peter needed people to know, hey, I'm learning too. This is the Holy Spirit. We knew it was supposed to be coming. This is how it's manifest. We need to be able to grasp that and carry out and operate in our churches. Gideon, get an idea. You want me to tell all these other people to go home and only accept the ones that laugh because they were being strategic in how they got water? Yep, that's it. And he had to take that idea and bring it into a reality that conquered and won many battles. Walk around a building and it's gonna, we're going to win this battle? Yeah, go walk around Jericho. Do it just like this. And he took that idea, that concept that God had given him, and he brought it to reality. So this morning, it's been unusual. It's been different. We're going to pray for BB. And yeah, I, BB is good. BB's good. Now, did it make all of us feel real awkward? Oh, yeah. And if you think you're feeling awkward, this guy is really feeling awkward. All right, because I'm having to look at all of y'all. But I'm telling you, God gave me an idea here that said we need to get to a place that we can think disruptive, that we can come up with something that's not normal. It's, it's not what's usual that people would see. Now, we already do a lot of that around here, but it may have to go to a different level, all right? But we can get there if we're faithful with what God gives us. And we got to be able to share that. I mean, I'm giving you the freedom. Hey, if you get the idea, you got to share it. And if it's God-given and God-blessed, you know what everybody else is going to figure out? That's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Those 300 guys said, Gideon, you sure about this? Yeah, okay, we're doing it. Or we're going to walk around this building or this wall seven times. You sure? That's what we're doing. Okay. All right, the people bought into it. So if we hear, we hear these God-given and God-blessed ideas, God's gonna let everybody else know. And it's gonna might be a little different, but we gotta be able to be okay with being different and try something a little unnormal. And then it might get to become the new normal. That's what they did with the assemblies of God. 1900s people didn't know a thing about speaking in tongues. What in the world are we doing? And it changed the world for a time now we're kind of getting to a place that we're a little normal yeah we're supposed to speak in tongues now everybody still doesn't buy into that but uh, there's
there's a large group that does. And it makes things for sure different from other people's norms. But we still need new, new, new ways to get out of normal, to disrupt things, what was expected. So this morning, what I want you to do, if you're willing to be available for God to give you some God-given ideas that can be God-blessed, I would love for you to stand up this morning. I want to pray over you, uh, secure that in you, and then we'll get, we need to see what God wants to do. Is there anybody like that? It's like, hey, man, I'm okay. I need to find something a little different. My first one's Miss Verna. Let me tell you about Miss Verna. All right? She's, she's taken a concept, and she's made it reality. She even went this week to a, moved out of Magnolia to El Dorado to introduce trying to do a new cancer care program. That's, those are things that God given, God blessed, they're different. They're changing how we operate. And it can be, if we're faithful in it, God can bless that. So I thank you for standing this morning. This is just, hey, this is all about God. It's not us creating it and trying to think it up. I'm just saying, hey, if God drops it into you, all right, help us, tell us. We'll try to figure out. God will help us figure out how to make it happen, how to be different, how to come up with a $1.7 billion idea. Now, I will tell you this, $1.7 million didn't come the next day he created it. It spent him some time. He had to work on it. It took time for it to develop, for other people to catch on to it, for it to grow. But eventually it did, and it became his billion-dollar idea. So it doesn't happen overnight, but if we're willing and working and faithful, it can happen. So let's pray this morning. Father, I thank you, God, for this morning, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your presence, God, your power. Lord, I thank you for helping BB. Lord, I pray that your peace and your presence will be with her, Lord. God, that you will bless her with health and fullness, God, wholeness in her life, God. I just speak goodness over her life right now, Father. God, I pray that you bless her. Lord, help her in school right now. Lord, help her and finishing up and just being strong and healthy, God. And Lord, whatever calls that this morning, Lord, I pray that you heal that, Father. And I pray that you bless her spiritually, God. I pray that your Holy Spirit would fill her. God, draw her closer to you. Bless her, Lord, with your presence. And God, I pray for each of us that's here this morning, Lord. I pray that you would help us to be faithful, but also, Lord, in just disruptive faithfulness. Lord, if you will give us ideas, Lord, that you will give us concepts, things that can be made into reality, Father, I pray that you would fill us with those, Lord. Help us in what we need to do, how we can reach our Magnolia community, Father. The people around us, God, how we can reach those. Give us your ideas, God. Develop those in us, Father. And help us, Lord, in bringing that to reality, how we get it out of us and operating, God. I pray that you would just do that within us. Lord, uh, just give us your confidence, your wisdom, Lord, your guidance in that, Lord. God, I pray for this service, Lord. I pray that you would seal everything that's happened here today, God. The Lord, only good will come from this, Father. Lord, that your presence will fill this building and stay here with us. Lord, I pray that your presence will fill each of these people that are here today, Lord. And draw them, just draw them closer to you. Let us know you're with us, God, just even more and more. Let it help us in knowing you, Father. Lord, I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for this time, and I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, while they are all standing this morning, if there's anybody that maybe is like, man, I don't even know what this uh, Christianity is. I can't be in this disruptive faithfulness. Is there anyone that would say, hey, I want to I know more about Jesus, that I would like to learn more about him and how to be a believer and, and follow Jesus this morning? Is there anybody in that group? You just raise your hand. We all had to do that at one point. That's how you get to be a believer, is ask Jesus in your heart. All right, I don't see anybody this morning. Well, I will say thank you for being here. Keep BB in your prayer. Keep Miss Angela's son, Michael, in your prayer. And also keep um, Miss Annette in your prayers this week. So may God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful week.